Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Let me first thank uh, you, Madam Chairman, for your leadership. As we heard tonight, your leadership uh, in the cause of freedom does not stop at the shores of Cuba. It is wherever there is repression and oppression, there is the clear, concise voice of Chairwoman Ileana Rosleyden, as we have heard again tonight. Mr. Speaker, we've heard a lot, and I know that the time is getting short. But I want to quote somebody who we have not quoted, as far as I remember, here tonight. And this is President Obama. When Mr. Obama was running for president, he stated what the right policy, what his policy would be to deal with the Cuban tyranny. He said, quote, my policy towards Cuba will be guided by one word, libertad, freedom. And the road to freedom for all Cubans must begin with justice for Cubans, Cuba's political prisoners, the right of free speech, a free press, freedom of assembly, and it must lead to elections that are free and fair. Mr. Obama went on to say, I will maintain the embargo. It provides us with the leverage to present the regime with a regime with a clear choice if you take significant steps towards democracy, beginning with the freedom of all, all political prisoners, Mr. Obama said, we will take steps to begin normal, normalizing relations. That is the way to bring about real change in Cuba, Mr. Obama said, through strong, smart, principled democracy. Mr. Speaker, in essence, that day, then candidate Obama, Senator Obama, now President Obama, drew a red line about what the right policy was to deal with the Cuban regime. And sadly, on December 17th, President Obama announced that he was breaking that promise, that he was once again crossing, breaking, breaking his own red line. Now, we've heard tonight, but we've also heard from the vast majority of the pro-democracy leaders within the island who are struggling. They have objected to President Obama's change of policy. But, you know, Mr. Speaker, if you don't want to do it, if the President Obama doesn't want to do it for the sake of a future of freedom for the Cuban people, he should stand firm for the sake of the national security interests of the United States. As we've heard today, today, right now, as we speak, not, a, not 50 years ago, the Cuban regime harbors fugitives from American law including cop killers and terrorists. And what is President Obama's answer? No problem. We'll normalize relations. The Cuban regime has an active espionage network against the interests of the United States. And what is the President's answer to that? No problem. We'll normalize. You can continue to do that. The Cuban regime shot down two American airplanes in the international airspace. And the person who was, the people who were in prison, including one for, uh, it was in prison for conspiracy to murder, not only is it okay, no problem, we're normalized, but no, we'll send them back so you can go back home. Mr. Speaker, the night is long, is late. But I know and I'm confident that unlike President Obama, this Congress will continue to stand firm with the cause of freedom, and the cause of a free Cuba, even while President Obama does not. I yield back, Mr. Speaker.